Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaste in today's lecture we will carry on our discussion and have a look at silvicultural systems. We have seen before that silviculture is the art and science of cultivating forest crops and a system is defined as a set of things working together as parts of a mechanism or an interconnecting network. So, when we combine both of these together what we are saying is that we are doing silviculture using a system which comprises of a number of things that are working together as part of a mechanism to enable us to reach to our goal of the silviculture and to meet our silvicultural objectives. So, silvicultural system can be defined as a planned program of treatments during the whole life of a forest designed to achieve specific stand structural objectives. So, it is a planned program, you do not just have a program, it is it goes according to a plan. So, you decide what comes after what. So, it is a planned program of treatments. So, treatments are different kinds of interventions that are given to the forest. So, it is a planned program of treatments or interventions during the whole life of a forest. So, your silvicultural system does not just deal with the beginning of a forest or just the ending of the forest, but it deals with the whole life of a forest from planting of, uh, of, uh, of new plants to the harvesting and the process then continues. So, it is a planned program of treatments during the whole life of a forest designed to achieve specific stand structural objectives. So, why are we using a, a silvicultural system to achieve specific stand structural objectives. And what are these stand structural objectives? We will come to it in a short while. Now, this program integrates harvesting, regeneration, and stand tending methods to achieve a predictable yield of benefits from the stand over time. What it says is we are integrating these three things. One is harvesting. So, harvesting is the process through which you extract timber from your forest by cutting the trees. Then you also have regeneration. So, regeneration is putting up the next generation. Once you have harvested a forest, then you need to regenerate that forest, so that the next generation comes up. And the stand tending methods. So, stand tending methods are those methods that you do for the benefit of your stand. And the silvicultural system is integrating all these three harvesting, regeneration and stand tending to achieve a predictable yield of benefits. So, you are not working with an unpredictable system, you are doing all of these, so that you can achieve a predictable yield of benefits. It means that every year I should be able to say how much amount of timber will I be able to harvest from this stand. So, to achieve a predictable yield of benefits from the stand over time and typically this time is taken to be infinity. So, I want to manage my forest in such a manner that I am able to extract x amount of timber from this forest every year till perpetuity. So, I do not want to have a forest that I can only extract benefits from uh, for the next say 20, 30 years. I want to have I want to manage it in such a way that I am able to harvest these benefits over time. So, how do we define a stand? A forest stand is a contiguous community of trees sufficiently uniform in composition, structure, age and size class distribution, spatial arrangement, site quality, condition or location to distinguish it from adjacent communities. What is it saying? A forest stand is a contiguous community. What is a community? A community is a group of individuals that belong to different species. So, when we are talking about a forest community, what we are saying is that it is not just one species that we are talking about, but we are talking about a combination of species, both uh, vegetative and also 
the animal species. And in this case what we are saying is that it is a contiguous community of trees. So, you have a group of trees together that uh, primarily belong to different species and they are contiguous which means that they are close together. So, it is a contiguous community of trees that is sufficiently uniform in composition, structure, age and size class distribution, spatial arrangement, site quality, condition and location. What we are saying is that this contiguous community of trees is sufficiently uniform and it is uniform in terms of a number of characteristics, it is uniform in composition. So, for instance, if we have a stand, so let us consider two stands. So, you have this first stand that is made up of these green trees and probably some red trees and then you have another stand that is made up of yellow trees and see say these blue trees. So, all of these are different species. Now, if you have a look at these two stands, we can very clearly say that we can draw a line and say that this left side portion is very different from the right side portion, because this left side portion is having green and red trees, the right side portion is having the yellow and the blue trees, but this stand is a uniform stand and this side is also a uniform stand. It is uniform in terms of the composition. So, composition means that if you consider that this stand let us extend it to some other to some more trees, then what this definition is saying is that this stand on the left side is uniform in terms of composition. So, that if you look at this big stand, so let us say that you have this big stand which is your stand 1. So, whether you look at this small portion of this stand or this small portion of this stand or say this small portion of this stand all of these will appear similar and will have common characteristics in terms of composition, which means that suppose this one has say 70 percent teak and 30 percent mango. So, this one will also be having roughly 70 percent teak and 30 percent mango and so with this and so with this. So, it is uniform in terms of composition, it is also uniform in terms of structure. So, a structure of a forest by this we mean that you are having a, a different spatial structure. So, you have uh, your uh, canopy, the emergent layer, you have uh, the understory and you have the forest floor. So, even this is structure will look same or will be the same in different parts of the stand. So, the whole stand is uniform in terms of structure, it is also uniform in terms of age and size class distribution. What do we mean by that? We want to say that if we come back to this drawing board. So, if this stand has say an age class distribution of let us say 0 to 30 years. So, you have 30 percent plants that are of 0 to 30 years, 30 to 60 years you have say uh, 60 percent trees that are uh, 30 to 60 years and greater than 60 years is say 10 percent. So, if this is the age distribution in this location, location 1, then the, the same distribution will be there in location 2, location 3 and so on. So, it is uniform in terms of age and size class distribution. Now, age and size class distribution correspond to each other, because as your tree ages the size also increases. Now, your stand is also uniform in terms of the spatial arrangement of trees. What do you mean by spatial arrangement of trees? What we want to say here is that if you have um, a stand in which your spatial arrangement is say clumpy, so you have trees like this here, 
and if you look at another portion of the strand you will also have trees in a clumpy formation and if you have say uh, one location which is clumpy and say the other location which is haphazard then you will say that this portion section 1 and section 2 are not part of the same strand because they are different. So, your stand is uniform in terms of the spatial arrangement, it is uniform in terms of site quality. By site quality we mean to say that the fertility of the soil in all the portions of the stand is sufficiently uniform. So, you, you will not have one portion of the stand that is very fertile and another portion that is very much infertile. So, there has to be uniformity in terms of site quality, condition or location the location will also be roughly the same, because the, this is a contiguous community. And it will be differentiated from other such uh, communities in one or more of these characteristics. So, it is a contiguous community of trees that are sufficiently uniform in these characteristics to distinguish it from adjacent communities. So, if you have two communities and say this one is 80 percent teak and 30 percent mango, uh, 30 percent mango, then it will be very different from a contiguous community, which is say 40 percent teak and 60 percent mango. So, your stand is a contiguous community that is sufficiently uniform and is a uh, is uh, different from the adjacent such communities. Now, a stand may be even aced, uneven aced or two aced. Now, what we mean by an even aced forest? An even aced forest is when your trees are roughly of the same age. And when we say it roughly, how do we define this roughly? An even aced stand will have trees growing within the stand that have only small differences in their ages usually less than 20 percent of the intended rotation. Now, what do we mean by intended rotation? Rotation age is the age at which you consider that your trees are mature. So, suppose there is uh, a forest stand of teak trees and suppose the rotation age is considered to be 90 percent. So, here you have r is equal to uh, 90 years what is 20 percent of r? 18 years. So, if you are talking about an even aged stand of teak trees. So, in that case all these trees will have the same age or the maximum difference between the ages of one tree and another tree will be 20 percent of r which is 18 years. So, you will not have one tree that is say one year of age and other and another tree that is say 50 years of age. So, that is an uh, that is a an even aged forest or an even aged stand. You can also have an uneven aged stand in which the trees that are growing within the stand have large differences in their ages usually greater than 20 percent of the intended rotation. So, if the trees are having different ages they are of uh, and uh, correspondingly they are of different uh, sizes, then we will say that it is an uneven aged stand. And in certain cases we also have a two aged stand, in which you have a stand with two distinctly different ages of trees. So, in this case if we draw a distribution of age versus the number of trees. Now, suppose you distribution looks like this. So, in this case we will say that this is an even aged forest, because you have trees that are roughly of the same age, the age uh, distribution is from here to here and it is less than 20 percent of the rotation age. But if you have a stand that shows a bimodal distribution, so in this case you will say that this is two aged forest.
but if you have a stand that has trees of every ages, then we will say that this is an uneven aged forest. So, even aged is when trees have nearly the same age, two aged forest is when you have two groups of trees and each group is of the same age and uneven aged is when different trees have different ages. Now, what is rotation? So, we talked about the rotation age. Rotation is the planned number of years between the formation and the final felling of a crop. What we are saying here is that suppose you have a piece of land and on this piece of land you put up teak plants. Now, you are growing this crop, because you want to harvest this crop at a later stage, possibly to have timber and to sell that timber and to earn revenue. Now, how long are you going to keep these plants in this piece of land? So, typically there will be an age at which we will say that yeah, now the, the uh, now these trees are sufficiently mature, they are not putting up any more growth or the, the rate of increment of growth is so less that it is now economically unviable to keep them further in this piece of land. So, from this stage to the second stage where you have trees that have that you now consider to be mature enough for filling. This is going to take certain time t and this time is known as the rotation period or the rotation age of this particular species at this particular site. So, rotation is the planned number of years between the formation of the stand and the final felling of the crop or you can also define it as the average age at which a tree is considered mature for felling. Now, we had said that we are doing or we are adopting a silvicultural system to meet certain stand structural objectives. So, what are these stand structural objectives? You can have a stand structural objective to have a certain age class structure. Now, what do we mean by uh, this age class structure? Well, typically what we are referring to is this curve. Do we want to have our trees that are of uh, the same age? So, when we are talking about an even aged forest, so this sort of a distribution, the even aged distribution is something that we would want to have. Now, why would you want to have this distribution? Because uh, in the case of an even aged forest, you can very clearly say uh, when you want to cut the these trees and when uh, when you want to to intervene in, in this forest, you can apply the same intervention to the whole of the forest, because all the parts of the stand will be having trees of the same age. So, suppose you have to perform any tending operation, you can apply this tending operation to the whole of the stand. You do not have to search for individual trees on which you want to, uh, to impart your uh, tending operations. When you want to uh, fill these this particular stand, you can clear fell it all at the same time. So, you can concentrate your management operations if you have an even aged forest. So, this is one sort of an age class structure that you could aim for or in other cases you could aim for this inverse j sort of a curve. Now, this inverse j sort of a curve that you find in an uneven aged forest might also be useful for you if suppose your aim is to uh, to manage this forest for wildlife. Now, in the case of wildlife purposes, different age uh, age classes of uh, your trees will have different benefits for different organisms. So, for instance, in the early periods, your crops might be eaten up by the herbivores. So, you have these small plants, and because your forest is having a plethora of these small plants, so herbivores will be able to eat these plants and able to sustain themselves. Whereas, in the case of very old plants, you will be having the snag trees, because these will be very mature trees and they will be having certain holes in their body 
or certain imperfections that uh, animals can make use of as their home, they can make their nest there. Also you can you will be having certain trees that are of a mature age, which in turn will be supplying seeds for these early aged plants and will also be supplying for these old aged trees. So, this could also be your, uh, your particular stand structural objective to have your stand in this particular age class structure or your stand structural objective could be to change uh, or to have a particular site occupancy. So, in the case of a site occupancy you can say that, uh, uh, that you want to have uh, your trees at a particular location. Now, this is possible that in your piece of land. Suppose, you have a river that is flowing in this location. So, you can have a stand structural objective to have trees on both the banks of this river, so that erosion is avoided. <coughs> so, this can be your stand structural objective to have a very dense growth of trees at this particular site. So, you, you might want to have a certain site occupancy probably by a, a certain species. Another sand structural objective could be ha to have a preferred species mixture. So, you could want to go for a monoculture in which you have only a single species or you could even want to go for a mixed type of a forest if you want to raise it for say wildlife purposes. So, it so, your particular stand structural objective in this case is to have a certain preferred species mixture or you, you could, your objective could be to have a spatial distribution of trees as clumpy or uniform. So, you could want to have a forest in which your trees are clumped at this location and probably at this location and this location and in the other areas you are having a grassland. So, pr uh, probably in the case of a recreational purpose you could want to have such a clumpy distribution of trees. So, you would want to have certain groves of trees and the other areas will, will be having very less number of trees or probably will be grasslands or if you are raising a crop for say timber production or to mitigate climate change for carbon sequestration then probably you would want to have the whole area to have a uniform distribution of trees. So, whether you want a clumpy distribution or a uniform distribution could be one of your stand structural objectives and you will use your silvicultural system to achieve one of these, you would use your silvicultural system either to get a clumpy uh, sort of a system or uh, uh, clumpy sort of a stand or a uniform sort of a stand or your stand structural objective could be the creation and maintenance of desirable special structural attributes such as snack trees. So, you could even have a silvicultural system that is designed so that your forest will be having a lot a large number of snack trees, so that you can convert your forest into say a bird sanctuary. So, all of these are different stand structural objectives because of which we uh, use a silvicultural system. Now, in the case of a silvicultural system we have this particular sequence. So, you harvest your stand and after right after harvesting you go for a regeneration. So, in the case of regeneration you will plant your saplings once again, so that uh, the next generation comes up into the uh, forest and then you tend the forest. So, he here you have mature trees that you fell and then you uh, put up the, the next generation, then you tend this stand or uh, so tending uh, means that you care for this stand, so that after a while it again reaches maturity and you are able to harvest it again. So, this is the, the sequence of a silvicultural system. You can 
you regenerate the stand, then you tend the stand, so that it reaches maturity and you are able to harvest it again and then this process goes on and on. So, how do we define harvesting? Harvesting is the aggregation of all operations including pre-harvest planning and related to the filling of trees and the extraction of their stems or other usable parts from the forest for subsequent processing into industrial products also called timber harvesting. So, what is a harvesting? It is an aggregation of all operations. So, this is not a single operation because you, you might have these operations could be pre-harvest planning. Now, what is a pre-harvest planning? Your pre-harvest planning says that okay, I want to harvest my stand, where will I get the labor from? Where will I get the machines from? Where will I get the trucks from? Where, where am I going to dispose of my, pro, uh, my produce? So, all of these are pre-harvest planning. Then you do the harvest, that is you cut this timber and do a post-harvest assessment. So, post-harvest assessment is you go to this stand and you see okay, is the harvesting done in a proper manner or during the, the process of harvesting have I damaged the next generation. Or say, if you wanted to go for a natural regeneration, is it that during your harvesting, you have destroyed all the mother trees. So, you have to perform this assessment and this also will be included as part of harvesting. So, harvesting is an aggregation of all operations including pre-harvest planning and post-harvest assessment that are related to the felling of trees and the extraction of their stems or other usable parts. So, the aim of harvesting is to extract the stem or the timber and other usable parts from the forest for subsequent processing into industrial products. So, this is the first stage of a silvicultural system followed by regeneration. So, regeneration is the act of renewing the tree cover by establishing young trees naturally or artificially generally promptly after the previous stand or forest has been removed. And we have looked at regeneration in uh, great detail earlier. So, this is the act of renewing the tree cover, because after you harvesting you have removed the tree cover and you want to regenerate your uh, stand, so that it will have trees once again. And after regeneration you perform the tending operation. So, tending is any operation that is carried out for the benefit of a forest crop. So, the aim of a tending operation is to benefit your forest crop. So, it could be say protecting your forest from forest fires or from insect infestation. So, if you take steps to protect your forest from insect infestation, you are doing tending or caring of the forest stand. So, it is an operation that is carried out for the benefit of the forest crop at any stage of its life. So, tending is not an operation that you do only for the young plants, you do it all through the life of the stand. So, in the case of the young plants, the probably your aim would be to protect it from grazing by cattle. So, that would be a tending operation for the young crops, but in the case of mature uh, trees probably your tending operation would be to protect it against an insect infestation or to protect it against diseases. So, you will also be doing tending operation when you have a mature tree. So, it will be done at, a, at any stage or at all stages of its life on the crop itself or on the competing vegetation. So, you can do an operation on the crop or you can do an operation on the competing vegetation. So, suppose you have a, a stand in which you are seeing a, a dense growth of climbers and you have, um, uh, you have a feeling that these climbers are going to compete against your desired species. By, uh, by winding around them and probably by also covering up their canopies. So, you can do an operation to remove these climbers. So, this will be an operation that is not done on the forest crop, but the, it is being done on a competing vegetation, but still it will be called as tending, because it you are doing it for the benefit of the forest crop. Or you can do a tending operation on the crop itself. So, for instance, if you uh, are applying certain fertilizers or manures or fertilize or pesticides to your uh, desired species in the crop, then that will also be called as a tending operation. So, examples of tending operations are cleaning, thinning, pruning, improvement felling, weeding, 
climber cutting, girdling and so on. So, in these operations what you are trying to do is that you are cleaning up the stand by uh, removing uh, certain uh, individuals that are not of your interest. You are thinning the stand, when we say thinning what we are saying is that suppose you have a forest, you have uh, this stand and you have trees that are growing very close together. Now, if you have these trees that are growing very close together, they are competing amongst themselves. So, that uh, the light, the water, the nutrients all of these have now become limiting for each and every of these individuals. So, in this case we, we may say that okay, we want to thin this stand. So, during this thinning operation we will remove certain individuals from this stand, so that the density of this stand reduces. So, we may say remove this individual, this individual, say this individual, this individual, this individual. So, in place of having a very dense stand, now the density is lesser. So, the amount of, of intra specific competition that we were seeing in this stand has reduced drastically. Now, every plant is able to get sufficient sunlight, sufficient water, sufficient nutrients. So, this is an operation which comes under uh, thinning and this is known as thinning or you could go for pruning. Now, what is pruning? Pruning is um, an operation in which you remove certain branches of the tree. Why would you want to remove them? Because when you cut a branch then at certain times it will give out new shoots and probably the, the, the crown density will increase. So, in place of having so, in place of having this small crown, when you put it through pruning, then you will start getting a larger sized crown and if you have a larger sized crown, then probably later on you will have more number of fruits, more number of seeds and so this will be useful when you are trying to regenerate your stand. So, this could be another tending operation or you can have improvement filling. So, you are filling certain individuals to improve your stand or you could go for weeding and weeding is especially important in the early stages of life. So, for instance we can have a situation in which this is your regeneration and this regeneration is surrounded by tall grasses because of which it is not getting sufficient sunlight. So, your weeding operation would be to remove these grasses, so that your plant uh, is able to get sufficient light, nutrition and sunlight or it could be climber cutting operation. So, climber cutting is usually done if you have say a tree that you are uh, that you are cultivating for timber purposes. Now, if you have a climber that is going around this tree. then it is possible that this climber strangulates your tree to such an extent that you start getting deformities in the bowl. So, if that is a situation then you would want to cut this climber and free your tree from these climbers. There could be another uh, situation in which these climbers once they reach to the canopy they grow so profusely that they cover the whole of your tree. So, the whole canopy is covered and so now your plant is not getting sufficient sunlight and in that case also you will cut these climbers, so that your uh, tree is freed from this uh, overgrowth. Now, another tending operation is girdling. Now, girdling is an operation in which you kill a tree, but you let it remain at the same site probably because you want your, your tree to be used as a shelter or as food by other organisms. So, in the process of girdling you cut a strip across this tree and you leave it as such. So, in this case the vascular tissues of this tree will be disrupted and it will slowly dry out and die. So, these are the different tending operations that we can do. Now, why do we do 
why do we perform a silviculture or why do we use a particular silvicultural system. So, there are several objectives that we are trying to meet by using a silvicultural system. Your objective could be meeting the goals and objectives of a working plan. Now, working plan is a document that tells you that over the next 10 years what are your objectives and how are you going to achieve them. So, suppose your working plan says that you want to convert your forest from say a monoculture into a wildlife habitat. So, this could be a goal and objective that has been prescribed by your working plan. Now, you will use a silvicultural system to achieve this objective. So, in place of your monoculture, you will put in place uh, a silvicultural system in which your trees are gradually cut and replaced by mixed species. So, this could be one objective of the silvicultural system. Another objective is to produce predictable harvest over time mostly in a sustainable manner. So, you want to have the same harvest every year, year after year or your objective could be to bring about a balance between biological, economic and ecological concerns. So, earlier you had a forest that was using monoculture and the only objective was to meet the demands of the timber industry. But then later on probably you decided that no, we also want to have ecological benefits from this forest and we need to make a balance between the biological concerns that is the biodiversity, the economic concerns that is getting money out of this forest and the ecological concerns that is ecological security, probably getting uh, more uh, ground water recharge, purification of water and so on. So, you want to make a balance between all of these. So, what are the species that you will have in your forest such that you have uh, a balance of all these three concerns. So, once you have decided that you cannot just cut your complete forest and grow these species, because these species will, will also take time to become a mature forest. So, your silvicultural system in this case would be to gradually re, uh, reduce the, the number of your trees in the monoculture system and putting up these new species, so that you are able to achieve a final balance between the ecological, biological and the economic concerns or your objective could be to provide for regeneration or it could be to efficiently and effectively utilize the growing space and the site productivity. So, what we are saying here is that you have this piece of land and on this piece of land probably you were only having say two or three species. Now, because in on this piece of land fertility is good enough, amount of moisture is good enough and sunlight is also good enough. So, probably you could manage this site in a better manner by say putting up more number of trees. So, earlier you were able to utilize only 20 percent of your productivity, now you are able to utilize 80 percent of the sites productivity. So, that could be another of your uh, silvicultural systems objective or it could be sustaining non market values and ecosystem services. So, you can even have a silvicultural system that is not aimed towards the felling of trees, but is more inclined towards meeting the non market values and the ecosystem services. Now, these services could include stabilizing soils to inhibit erosion. So, you can even have a silvicultural system that just prescribes that you are going to plant trees near the river banks and you are going to leave them as such, you are not going to fill them. So, that the, uh, the river banks are stabilized and the erosion is reduced. Another ecosystem service could be maintenance of indigenous populations of insects, fungi, essential microorganisms. So, in this case you could just say that okay, my silvicultural system is going to prescribe that I am not going to make any changes whatsoever in my forest and I will let nature play its role. So, in which case I am not concerned about whether uh, any plant survives or whether any plant dies. Uh, if it survives naturally, I am ok with it. If it dies naturally, I am ok with it, because even when the, my trees die off, they, they will be used up by other insects, 
fungi or other organisms as food. So, even their death I am happy about it or it could be to improve the habitats. So, improvement of habitat is also another uh, non market value. So, in this case you could have a silvicultural system that prescribes that, uh, that near your sewage uh, uh, nalas you will be growing certain species that are able to, uh, to, uh, to take this water and perform bioremediation or you could have a silvicultural system that only aims to increase your ground water recharge. So, that could be another of your silvicultural system objectives or you could have an objective of sequestration and storage of carbon in which case you would go for certain species that grow very fast that uh, can sequester a lot of carbon dioxide into biomass in a very short period of time. So, that could be another objective. So, you can have a silvicultural system that uh, that is meant to meet one or more of these objectives. Now, we have different kinds of silvicultural systems and this chart uh, summarizes what are the different kinds of silvicultural systems. So, if you go through this flow chart, the first question it asks is the concentration of felling and regeneration operations. Are you concentrating your felling and regeneration operations on one part of the forest or are you uh, doing your felling and regeneration operations continuously over the whole area of the forest. Now, if you are doing it, it continuously over the whole area of the forest, you will have a selection system, but if you are concentrating it on part of a forest, then the next question it asks is how do you clear the old crop, are you, uh, are you clearing the old crop with a single filling or you are you clearing it with successive regeneration fillings. If you are clearing it with a single filling, then probably you have a clear cutting system, but if you are uh, clearing the old crop with successive regeneration fillings, then how are you opening the canopy? Are you opening it evenly over the whole compartment? In that case, you have a uniform shelter wood system. Are you opening it irregularly and gradually over the whole of the uh, stand? In that case, you will have an irregular shelter wood system. And if you are opening it in scattered gaps, in that case, you will be having a group shelter wood system. So, these are different kinds of silvicultural systems and we will look at each of these in the coming lectures, but the question to ask is why do we require so many silvicultural systems, why cannot we not uh, why can we not have just a single silvicultural system and use it on each and every forest, use it on each and every stand. So, the answer is because you have differences in the stand characteristics to begin with. So, every stand uh, will have different species, will have different mix of species and will have different characteristics whether it is clumpy or uniform and so on. So, depending on the stand characteristics you will need to have different operations to meet your objectives and for these different uh, object uh, for these different operations you need to have different silvicultural systems. Also there are large differences in management objectives. So, if you are managing a stand for timber, your management objective is very different from if you are managing your stand for biodiversity. And if you are having different objectives, then you cannot use the, the same system and bring about different results. So, your systems have to be different. Also, there are differences in the availability of technology and manpower. Suppose, you want to manage your forest uh, by say clear cutting clear filling system in which you say that okay, I am going to bring in large size machines and I am going to uh, cut these forests in one go and then I am going to transport it using large trucks. But probably at the site that you are you, that you plan to use the system, you do not have access to these large size machines. Probably you are uh, an island nation and in this island nation it is very difficult to bring in these machines or probably you do not have the money to purchase these machines. So, in that case you cannot just say okay, I am not having my machine. So, I am not going to do anything because in that case you will not be able to meet your silvicultural objectives. So, to meet your objectives you will have to go for another system. 
So, probably you, you will say that okay, I am not able to bring in my large size machines. So, I am going to cut my forest in small patches or in small groups and when you do that, you require a different system. So, we have different silvicultural systems, because there are differences in stand characteristics, there are differences in management objectives and there are differences in the availability of technology and manpower. So, in this lecture we began by looking at what a silvicultural system is. So, a silvicultural system is an integration of different operations to meet certain silvicultural objectives and these operations are uh, one harvesting of the earlier timber that was there on your uh, in your forest stand. Harvesting is followed by regeneration of this stand in which case you plant new, new trees or you go for a natural regeneration followed by tending operations, which are operations that are carried out for the benefit of your forest crop at any stage of its life and you can do it either on your crop or on competing vegetation. So, we saw the different kinds of tending operations. Then we had a look at what are the different silvicultural systems that we have and we require different systems, because we have different silvicultural or managerial objectives and to meet each and every of these objectives, we require a different system. We might even have different forest stands to begin with. So, in this lecture we looked at what are these, these different silvicultural systems and why do we need them. So, that is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Jai Hind.